Good morning. Happy Monday to you, you, especially you. Today is Monday, July the 29th. Do y'all know August will be here in a few minutes? Bless the Lord. Mm. My name is Minister Shonda Tucker, and this handsome man is my husband, Minister Ali Tucker. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm sleepy, babe. <laughs> you be like that? Olympics because I'm watching it like we got children in it. I'm like, oh god, it's so good. I love the Olympics, I love summer and winter Olympics, but it, they, they're on late, so there's that. And they're in Paris, and they got Snoop Dogg. <laughs> oh, so I'm sleepy, but. To God be the glory. Happy Monday again to you, you, and you. Our assignment every Monday morning is to lead the body of Christ in corporate prayer. And we get to do that because of our amazing church family, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries, under the leadership of our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. So we are thankful to them and to our church family for this opportunity. We don't take it for granted because when I tell you, they have an arsenal to choose from that could do this. <laughs> so we are thankful uh, to God to be able to come to you and be able to do this. Uh, we love our church family. Um, and we're just thankful just for the opportunity to, to do life with them and have them as our community. Uh, there is no Bible study for the month of July. We are resting and uh, we'll resume, I believe, in August. So yay, look forward to that. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. we have a prayer call. It is powerful. It is led by Minister Kimberly Martin. Uh, the number for prayer is 267-807-9605. Again, 267-807-9605. And the access code is 478-399. Now, this is not you calling in and, and um, giving us your prayer requests. It is us praying together corporately because there is power in coming together. Um, hopefully, you came together with your church family yesterday, or if not, we invite you to join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. at 806 Meadowlark Lane in Goodlitzville, Tennessee. That's the church home. And, of course, we're going to be... Huh? I And... And of course, you're going to be live on Facebook Live. What was that? Yeah. You know, you know, I'm diet and people let me get heckled, but okay, whatever. Is there something else you wanted to add to that? I think, it, I think you took care of everything off. My sweet wife. I'm so <laughs> These Olympics are taking over my life like I'm. Like I'm in them. Okay, what are we talking about today? What are we talking about? Oh. Mm. What to do? Are you sleeping? Always. What to do? <laughs> what to do when life gets to life? Tell what we're talking about today. So what we're gonna do when you know it is we live in a we live in a terrorist world. So life the really, world? A turbulence world. So life what really... What is that? Turbulence? <laughs> yeah. Tumultuous? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Whatever we go. So life really get a life and doing some some part of time. I mean, everything ain't... Every... But what does that mean when people say life gets to life in? What does that mean? You know how, you know, you... you, you, well, you life gets to life and you, you, you go to work every day. You, you get, if you got kids, you, know, you got things. There's always something coming up. It's always something to do. It's always you know, ain't enough time in a day, but and sometimes you do things. Uh, things get wayward in a way. We put it that way. And um, you know, some, like even death. You know, that, that might throw you for a, a curve or whatever. I mean, then you 
the kids get in trouble in school, they make through their careers, go on a job, they acting crazy. But even with all that, we still that hold our hold our integrity and be the men and women of God that God called us to be. Now, before we forget to do this, we're gonna we can go over our scripture for the day. It's gonna be this John 16, 33. Right, the New King Virgin reads as these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I also want to read you the pastor's translation, and it says, And everything I've taught you is so that is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world you will, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. Amen. Oops. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need some caffeine. Okay, because this word is not getting it. Okay, so we're talking about um, what to do when life is life. So the scripture reference refers to um, the Lord telling us, look, in this world, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have tribulation. Even uh, the scripture that says that no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. That is our heads up that life is going to be lifing. Basically, there are certain things that are set in motion because we live in a dying world. And so um, every day is not going to be sunshine and rainbows and roses. Mm -hmm. There is good in every day and every day is good because it's a gift from God. But some days are more difficult than others. And so when things happen, that happen to all of us, the word says the rain falls on the just and the unjust, sometimes we get overwhelmed and we start wondering, well, where is God? Well, why does God let good thing, bad things happen to good people? And, and why did my loved one die? And why is this happening? And, you know, just all the things that happen in the course of life. Well, in this scripture, God tells us to be of good courage. Now, we don't really say that in modern English like that. Husband, be of good courage. <laughs> what, what we say is don't fear. Be strong. Be confident in God. And so um, the phrase do not fear or is, is in the Bible 365 times in some capacity. And, and I was reading this thing that said that's a daily reminder to not be fearful because when life starts life in, if your first response is fear, um, if, if I was making uh, some tea, what's in the tea bag comes out in hot water. So who you are shows up in crisis, shows up when life starts life in. That's why we do this, is we're constantly trying to fill ourselves with the word of God so that when these situations come, our first response is not fear, it's faith. Um, the word says, though you slay, though he slay me, yet will I trust him in, in the book of Job. He, he's saying, I'm confident in God. I don't understand all these things that are happening in my life. And if you read the book of Job, Job went through some go through. But in all those things, he, he still stay in God's face. He stayed talking to God. He stayed in conversation. Now his friends came and, and gave him some wicked whack advice. His wife was talking crazy, but he stayed before God. And so sometimes we feel like a modern day Job, you know, um, so many things happen one right after the other that you feel like, okay, <laughs> what is happening? What is going on? But the beauty of this is that we're in this world, but we're not of it. Our eyes are going to see things, our ears are going to hear things, but that all of that God told us what happened in this scripture, saying that in this world, you're going to have trouble, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good courage, take heart. And I know sometimes when you see us on here laughing and cutting up, it seems like everything is perfect, it's wonderful, we never disagree, we never have any issues, that bless the Lord. <laughs> 
<laughs> is not our reality. Uh, we have two adult daughters that we are constantly standing for. We have um, family members that we love that have things that are going on. We can have things going on. We have all kinds of, of life, life and situations. But what we choose to do is to feed our faith and to starve our doubt. I'm just letting come with you, but so I get my wife to live in there. <laughs> so, yeah, life is life then. And um, I think this is our first time watching the Olympics together, and he seems incredibly amazed that I watched the Olympics and have been watching them for years because I am not, I'm the least athletic person on the planet. <laughs> I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm not trying to run a lap, race, nothing, do any of that. Bless the Lord for those of you that do. But I enjoy the stories behind the athletes. And um, one of my favorite things right now is the swimming because my daughter used to swim. So I know a little bit more about that than I do about some of the other things, but watching it, you watch them endure. You watch them run the race. You watch them when it looks like, are they going to win? Are they going to win? Are they going to lose? I don't know. You know, you're watching the reaction from the family and all of that. That, that I see as a reminder from God that we are in a race that we are going to win. It sometimes it looks like, you know, the, the people that were the enemy were against looks like he's gonna win, he's gonna pull it out. But but God fortifies us. And this training that we've been through in life prepares us for these situations. And so when we come along, the word says that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses um, who are cheering us on. God also places people in your life who cheer you on. So that's our assignment on Monday is to encourage the body of Christ to be like, you can do this. You can make it. You, you know, you're... Um, in a race and you hear somebody saying, go, Shana, go, go. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, I can, I can go faster. We cheer for each other. You know, if, if life gets to life and that text him or I call him and I say, hey, I need prayer. His words give me life or my pastor or, you know, my prayer partners. They, them speaking life over me. Like, Shana, you got this. You can do this. You'll be fine. It's no worries. Um. That motivates me to run further, to run faster. So this is our opportunity to cheer for you that iron sharpens iron and to encourage you that when life gets to life, then take heart, be of good courage, do not fear, because you will win if you do not quit. Okay? Okay. Amen. You know, the Word of God tells us that the race is not won by the swift or the strong, but the one that endures to the end. So just... God will tell them the thing is going to happen. So we just got to endure to the end. We had to, to, to keep our faith up. We had to stand on his word. Because you know sometimes, it, it, sometimes it's hard to stand on God's word when everything is coming next to you. But you know, that's when our faith kick in. You know, we still got to stand on God's word. But God, you said, pray God's word back to him. God, your word, you said, you said this and that. So I'm looking for mine. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you, you, you got, we got to stand on God's word and, 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 and be, it, it's hard to be in good cheer when things going on, but the word tells you to be, and be in good cheer because God, he, he going to bring you through. The, the Lord, you know, I know y all y'all know the same, but I know and I used to watch it well. I used to look at, it's a um, plaque my mom's head on the wall with the footprints. You know, you know, one time you see it was two sets, you see two sets of footprints, then you don't see the one. But when you don't see the one set of footprints, that when God is carrying you. Because all of us can go through phases of life where God had to carry us. God, we gonna we gonna need we we need we need Him more than He need us. So he, I mean, them, them the times when we stand on our faith to God, I know I know you are real. So you know we just I know you gonna take me through this. I mean, it it, it ain't gonna be easy all the time. You know, in James, what it tells you to go through through trials and tribulations, but by 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 by, by the testing your faith. You gain perseverance, you gain more faith, you know, you gain you gain that endurance to overcome because things going to come. I mean, that's just how life, the, the, when life is life, the things will come. But we got a God who's, who's faithful and he, 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 he wants to see us make it through. He want, he want to, he go, as long as we put our trust in him, he's going to carry us through every time. Is it what? Um, because I was going to correct something that you said. Oh. Um, the race is not given to to the swift. 
Go to school, but when you do what you need. That's not in there. He's on. <laughs> okay, what's you looking for that? I, that's something that people have put together. The word of God says the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to the men of skill. It doesn't say to those that endure to the end. They put two scriptures together. But it is that first part. The race is not given um, to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. So um, we're in a race and we're enduring something and we're hanging in there, but our endurance is not from our own physical strength. The Lord, when he left, he said, it's expedient that I go because I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a paraclete. I'm going to send you what I call the holy hookup. Holy Spirit. Um, is with us, in us, for us, through us, giving us inside information that helps us endure. So when I see all of these things happening and I'm having to deal with grief and having to deal with um, people treating me funny and, and, and um, just, just all the things that happen or can happen during the course of life, I am reminded with this holy hookup that I'm in it to win it, that God has already fixed the fight in our favor, and that when we chose God as the Lord of our life, we joined the winning team. So even when you look at the medal count, when you're looking at the Olympics, I'm, I, I was thinking about it last night when I was going to go to bed. The United States traditionally is really, really high. We have the highest medal count consistently. There is something about being in this nation where we cheer for the underdog, where we want, you know, the least and the left out. We love a good story that tells us how someone overcame. And what you don't realize is your story, your testimony, what God has done in your life already could cause someone to run further and to run faster. What happens is we don't want to tell our story because we're still working that thing out. We're like, okay, well, that part was good, but, you know, I still got some stuff <laughs> over here, so don't look over here. But in telling your story and in telling your testimony, you are helping to pull someone else along. So that's why no shame in our game. We, we just tell you what... what <laughs> <laughs> what's going on and when life is life then we still show up we do this every monday uh no matter where we are what we're doing did, how many of you know that we're married in real life so there have been times when i'm like i don't even want to talk to you mm. <laughs> i'm the only one okay right whatever but i have been upset but i want what god has for us more than i want to stay mad more than I want to um, be right about the situation, you know. So, so this is real life here, real couple, real, <laughs> real relationship, real stuff happening. But when Monday morning comes and we have a work to do, we get it done. So, life is always going to be lifing. But the Word of God reminds us to take heart, to have courage. We have a holy hookup from Holy Spirit who is with us, who is for us. We're not in this thing by ourselves. We know how this race is going to end. The only thing that can stop us is us. And that's when we quit. Now, if someone gets right to the finish line and stops, guess what? The enemy's going to overtake them. But we haven't seen that in these Olympics. These people are fighting to the bitter end. People are winning by one one hundredth of a second. If they had pulled back even a little bit, they would have lost. There, there are people hitting the wall at the same time in, in, in swimming. So we, we both going to be silver. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just wonderful to see that they're not giving up, that they're hanging in there, that they are, you know, people who have never competed in the sport ever are just like, yay, go, go. I'm cheering with Simone's family like they mine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's so funny to see Snoop there because it's like everybody wants to see somebody win. And so for him, this is like a different, seeing a different side of him. And yeah, I want to I wanna cheer for my folks and I want to be there. And so you have people cheering for you that you don't even know. People, we haven't met all of you all, but we cheer for you and we pray for you and we cover you because we're in the same race, right? And then lastly, uh, one of the things that um, Pastor Kendra said yesterday that kind of like the Lord highlighted for me was in all of these things, what it really boils down to is do you trust God? Mm -hmm. 
Um, we say that he is Lord of our life and we say, God, we want your will more than we want ours. But do we trust him? Do we trust him when all hell is breaking loose, when life is life, and when we get the doctor's report, when when the money is funny and the change is strange, when our credit can't get it, you know, when, when the kids are acting a fool, when 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 all hell is breaking loose, do I still trust God? Because what my natural eyes are seeing and what my ears are hearing could be the furthest thing from the reality of it's all working together for my good. That behind the scenes that God is orchestrating some things that I can't see right now. And that I've got to trust him no matter what it looks like. When I put him in remembrance of his word, it's not because he forgot. It is because I'm showing him that I know what what my benefits are in this benefit package. And if he promised me in his word that I could have it, I'm coming for my stuff. So we have got to trust God. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a future and a hope. God has a plan for our life. And it's better than any plan that I could come up with. I couldn't have planned this. I couldn't have planned this. <laughs> God did it. And so everything that we have, everything that we get to enjoy is because God's plan was better than ours. Amen. Even when times of trouble, even when you go through times of trouble, God knew, oh, he always gives you a way out. The word of God says God always gives you a way out. So we just got to Sometimes, you know, like I said, sometimes we'll get hard. Sometimes you like to depress yourself and make you break, but you ain't got to break. You just continue to pray and continue to stay in God's faith, continue to you know, pray and continue praying and just, and just have confidence that God will take you through. Because he will. He, I mean, I, I've been in some tough situations in my life. Some, most of them because of my own fault, though. But I mean, <laughs> some stuff I did, some stuff I won't do that was outside the will of God. It might have put me in them situation. But once I came to my senses, I didn't realize you know, God, God, he is the way he wanted me to live. So, I mean, he, he always brought me through. I'm still here today. Because some, some of the stuff up. growing up, I thought, I, I ain't thought I could make it be 50 years old. I, I didn't. I said, nah, I ain't no way I see 50 where I'm living. But by the grace of God, I've seen 50 more. So, I like more. You know what? Let me tell so we just we just want to encourage you just to continue to when life gets like this and just continue to put your faith in God, hold hold true to His word, continue to stay on your face praying, praying for your loved ones because it's it's a lot of people. A lot of, we got a lot of, we got we got a lot of family, a lot of loved ones that might not be living the life that we think they ought to be living. We ain't gonna we just gonna leave it at that, you know. So we we. Cause my mom for many years, I, she she heard she was praying for me, cause I wanted to live the life that God had intended for me, but she 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 kept kept in prayer. And this is this is an old hymn that somebody prayed for me. I mean, I'm glad they did. I'm glad they were praying for me, cause back then I wasn't praying for myself. I won't won't take won't take the time to think about praying, but there was somebody prayed for me. And so so that's why we everybody come we can pray for y'all and pray for the ones that still lost. There's still a lot of lost souls out there, but. When they see us and they see how the way we live and how we are faith in God, you know, we give them hope. Just like you know, God gave us hope, we we we, we giving them hope. So we just hope carriers. <laughs> hope dealers. Hope. H O P E, not dope. Hope. Um, so yeah, that's what we have for you today. If you're going through and everybody's going through something, um, we are covering you in prayer. Let me be the first to tell you, don't run from God, run to him. Run right up to him and say, hey, now, <laughs> what is going on? Give me wisdom for this situation. Help me deal with this. Help me understand what's happening here and teach me how to respond to this thing. Let me see this the way that you see this. Um, I, I used to tell the story all the time that... Um, my daughter, when she was little, she didn't like when people would be raising their voices. And um, she was watching her dad and her grandfather um, looking at a football game, and they were four opposing teams. And so as the game was going on, they were up yelling at each other, and just but all in good spirits. But she had never seen that before. And she was sitting on the floor in front of me playing on a blanket. And um, 
she, I was so worried about whether or not them yelling at each other was like making her nervous because I, I just knew from experience. Sometimes she would cry if people started yelling. So, and she's still like that. If, if you raise your voice to her, she, she kind of like mentally checks out. And, and <laughs> my friend Kara is like that. If you start raising your voice to talk to her, she's just like, I'm not even listening anymore. So, um, when that happened, I thought, oh God, if I could just get to her or whatever. But I was lightweight kind of laughing at the two men going back and forth. And so she never looked upset. And so when we got in the car, I said, were you nervous or did that bother you when Popeye and your dad were yelling? She was like, no, I, I just kept looking at your face and I decided I would worry when you looked worried. She may have been all of six when she said that, but that thing ministers to me even now. We can worry when God looks worried. No matter what's going on, no matter how chaotic it looks, if I'm looking at him and I, I have my focus on the Father, then when he looks scared, when he looks worried, when he tells me, Sean, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. Then that's when I can worry. That's when I can panic. But just from a six-year-old girl saying, Mom, I looked at your face and you were still smiling and laughing. You didn't seem overly concerned about these, these men yelling at each other about a football game. So I figured everything was all right. So our reminder to you today is to keep your focus on God. You can panic when he panics, and I promise you, you're not going to see him panic because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is Alpha and Omega. He knows the end from the beginning, and he has set this thing up so that you will win. Yes, you're going to have some trouble and some tribulations, but just hang on in there because it's going to be greater later. I promise you. Okay? All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else, love, love? I think that's it. I think you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all keep watching the Olympics because it's good. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah, that will shake you. Yeah, that Father God, I just thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity you. just to praise your holy name, Father God. Just thank you for who you are in our lives, dear Lord. Father, I just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your word, dear Lord. Father, I thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary Cross for all of us, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. And Father God, I just thank you for your patience you have with us, Father God. Yes, God. So right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we just open our hearts and minds, Father God, to invite you in, Father God. Yes. And Father God, just give us guidance and direction on this day, Father God. Not only this day, but every day, Father yes, God. God. And Father God, just give us the courage just to keep on keeping on, Father God. The yes. courage just to... Look to you when things start, when life gets to life, and Father God, yes, the characters could look to you for we can have, a, for we can get a way out, Father God. Father yeah. God, just thank you for just always making a way out for us, Father God. Thank you for always being there, Father God, when we felt when nobody else was there, Father God. Thank, thank you for Jesus. always covering us with the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, Father God. Thank you for always giving us hope, Father God. Even when things look bleak, Father God, you yes. have always given us hope, Father God. So just thank you. For the hope we have in you, Father God. Thank you for always being faithful, dear Lord. Yes, God. Even when we weren't faithful, Father God, you were still faithful, Father God. So thank you for always being faithful to us, Father God, and always just keeping us, Father God, keeping us safe, Father God, in the mighty yes. name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, even, even, our, and even when we weren't doing right, in, Doing right in this world, Father God, you were still there with us. When we know how to love ourselves, Father God, you still know how to love us, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, just thank you for saving us when we ain't ready to be saved, Father God. Just thank you for all you're doing in life. Thank you for always being ahead of our lives, Father God. Father God, I always thank you for giving us good parents, Father God. Thank you for giving us pe good people along the way who help us to where we at right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. So thank you, dear Lord, for all you're doing in our lives and what you're about to do, dear. We speak to the spirit of fear and we command it to go now in Jesus' name. The word of God says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So God, we thank you that we are determined to feed our faith and to starve every one of our doubts. God, go ahead of us into this day and into this week. God, make every crooked path straight. God, give us supernatural favor with you and with man. God, set before us open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open.
heaven. We thank you, God, for your word that declares that he who began a good work in us will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, God, we will be confident in our faith. Our confidence is in you, God. You have never failed us, God, and you are not about to start now. So, God, we stand in the gap for every person that is watching. We decree and declare that their best days are still in front of them, God. We decree and declare that they lack nothing because you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. God, meet every one of our needs according to your riches and glory, God. I thank you for being Jehovah Shammah, the God who is with us because your word declares in Romans 8, 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? Thank you for being the God who is with us and for us, God. Thank you for being the hedge of protection around us and around those that we love, God. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us in season and out of season, God. We thank you, Father God, for your word that declares in Proverbs 10, 22, that the blessings of the Lord make us rich and add no sorrow with it. God, we are determined not to be sorrowful, God. We're determined to be excited like a kid on Christmas morning about what you're doing in us, for us, and through us. God, you are not a man that you should lie. You keep your promises to yes. us. And God, when we come before you, God, we're determined to lay it all, every heaviness, every care, every worry, every concern, God, to lay it all at your feet. Nothing is too hard for you, and with you, all things are possible. So I thank you for my brother and my sister in Christ who are watching, God. I decree and declare that they are blessed, that they are covered, that they are a fortified city, God, that you are even now ministering to their heart and to their their spirit, that they are lifting up their heads to the lover of their soul. God, you are so awesome, and we praise you in advance for the report of the Lord that all is well. God, we pray for our nation that we would truly be one nation under God. We pray, Father God, for the peace of Jerusalem and Israel. We pray for our spiritual leaders, for heads of household, God. We pray for our children and for the school system, God. As the children head back to school, God, we just cover them with the blood of Jesus, God. We send your angels to encamp around every school system and administration in every classroom, God. We decree and declare that the school system is a no-fly zone for the enemy, God. Protect our children and keep them safe as only you can, God. God, whatever cares or concerns that we should be mentioning, God, we hold them up before you and we decree and declare that all is well. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, if this bless you, put amen in the comments or share it with someone that you know needs to be encouraged while life is life. And we give honor again to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. We give honor to our church family, Pursue for His Presence Ministries. And we give honor to each of you. Listen, if you're looking for an opportunity to sow, Pursue for His Presence Ministries is good ground to sow into, not because we desire a gift, but we desire fruit that may abound on your account. We give honor to our overseer, Dr. Caesar Richburg. We give honor to Mother Ella and to Calvin and Felicia and Peyton, all of the Richburg family. We give honor to Mother Blanton, who blessed us with the psalmist, Pastor Kevin. We give honor to baby Mallory. We are so excited to meet her next month and excited about what God is doing. And we give honor to each of you. This coming together, this iron sharpening iron, it encourages us and we pray that it encourages you. Pray for us. We're traveling this week. Just pray traveling grace and mercy over us. Uh, we're going to a conference where we hope we come back with, with a beard going <laughs> uh, because we have been in the presence of the Lord. We love you so much. If there's something specific that we need to be praying about, inbox us or put it in the comments. I'm going to put this out there one more time. I said it last week and I thank you to those of you who took me up on it. Look, if life is life and really, really hard and you need a word from the Lord, I am available. I'm not going to tell you what thus saith Shonda. I'm going to tell you what thus saith the Lord. So feel free to reach out to me. Reach out to me on here. Um, my Facebook page is Shonda Mason Tucker. My direct phone number is 615-403-4167. Is my cell phone number. Use it wisely or you're going to get blocked. Um, but um, if you're going through something and life is life, and feel free to reach out to me because sometimes you just need somebody standing with you and praying with you. And I take my calling seriously. And I am serious about us not giving up and losing our 
faith, okay? We love you with the love of Christ. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. Keep watching the Olympics. Cheer for you folks. Um, anything else? Nothing you should be. All right. We love you. Be blessed. Bye. Oh, the shirts are from Pastor Kevin. Amazing God. Get you one. All right. Love you. <laughs>